Hi, this is Bryn LeBlanc, and we're going to go over some of the basic uh, uh, attributes for the uh, Arnold shaders and how to assign them to objects. So in this scene, all I have here is a sky dome with just white on it. And I have a sphere and a ground plane. And that's it. So these just have the default Lamberts attached to them. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the object that I want to make a new material for. Uh, left click on that object. And then I'm going to right click and go down to assign new material here. So then in my, it should look like this. And in this, uh, this assignment um, window, I'll go up to this search bar here and I'll type AI and that's an Arnold uh, prefix. And then I'll look down to our AI standard surface, which is the Arnold standard material. So I'll click that. It'll make a default material. I can open up the attributes here. And this is where you'll change colors and everything. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to rename this. So we'll call this sphere material. And then I'll click on the ground plane and then I'm going to make a material for that as well. So I'll right click on the ground plane, go to assign new material. AI is already flagged here. So all these are here. So I'll just AI standard service again. And then let's say I want to make this a uh, blue color. And oh, we will name this surface ground material. Then I'll click on the sphere. It'll bring up my sphere material options. So you can just click back and forth through, through those options. And in the attribute editor on the far right hand side, you'll see that the, um, the material gets flagged for that. And if you step through, you can see those other objects, like the shape node and the transform node here so it kind of just stores all that information so so when I click on that and another way that you can access these materials is from the hypershade so up here you'll see there's a couple ways to access it you can go to window render editors hypershade or you can just click the hotkey here and this is just going to open up your um, your hypershade which here in this tab is where all your materials will be stored. This tab will be where your textures are stored, utilities, rendering, lights, cameras. Um, it's just a, a, an easier way to see what is all in your scene. So I'll go back to materials and I can see that I've already named these. So the sphere material. And if you left click on a material and then you right click and hold and you go to graph network, that will put that material into your node graph and you can hold down alt and right click and you can zoom in and out uh, if your tree gets really big and then middle mouse click so you can just pan through so here's where all of the inputs are and they're also in the attribute editor here or you can look at them in the material in the property editor so this is all the same way this is like just a few different ways to do the same thing so whenever you have a material selected you can see in the attributes or in the material editor, or in the hypershade. Um, just giving you a little bit of more options. So I'm gonna bring over this window. And so we've got that blue ground plane, and then we've got our sphere material. So I'll bring over my attribute editor, and I have this live, so you can see as we're changing the color, it's changing in real time. Let's see that I have a uh, when I click this checker box over here, what that does is it opens up your uh, create render nodes um, tab. And you can add a file, so you can add a texture, or you can use some of the uh, procedurals. So bulge or checker or cloth or fractal, uh, different noises and ramps and things like that. So for this one, I'll just do this checker so you can see what happens. So now this uh, checker is driven in the color of the object so I can click on the object again and you can see that this is whenever there's a little uh, black outline box with this arrow 
that means that there's something attached to it. And you can see that this slider is grayed out. I can't click it. And when I click here, it doesn't do anything either because this is attached to something else. So if you want to dial into whatever you have attached here, there's two ways. You can just click this and it will uh, go into whatever you have attached to it. So here is the checker and it's 2D place node. So I could change the repeats. So I can just double the repeat to eight from four and then I'll go back to checker and then I see you know different settings that you have in your checker so say you do you oh here's another way to look at it is in the hypershade but now we have this checker attached to it that there's this checker that is the out color is going into the base color and you could also put that into anywhere so the difference between these red nodes and these green nodes is that the red nodes can have uh, triples put into them. So a triple is a RGB value. So you can see this out color, one, two, three, RGB. So that means that this out color has three channels attached to it. So a triple is three channels and scalar is a single channel. So if you need a single channel, what you can do is you can just grab a single channel and then you can put that into one of these green values. So basically when it's a single channel, all that means is that you need a single black and white map to drive uh, one of these settings. And if it's red, that means that it needs a color map to drive these settings. So it doesn't necessarily uh, have to have color. It just needs three channels. That's just that's just how uh, the renderer um, thinks about these types of um, these settings. So just keep that in mind whenever you're you're building different materials. All right. So to uh, break connection, there's two ways to do it. You can either go over to the property editor, the attributes, and see it here where it's grayed out. You can go to color and right click and say break connection. And if you do that, it will break that connection. Or another way. If you're in the hypershade here and you see this little whip that's attached there, you can just select it and delete it. And that will uh, get rid of that connection. So there's there are a couple ways you can do that. All right, so that's a, a brief overview on just how to use the base colors. Now we'll go to uh, how to, so I'm just gonna move the hypershade over here and use the attribute editor just so you have an easier time to see both of these on screen at the same time. Next, we're going to look at this metalness value. So to really see what's happening here, if I turn it up, it doesn't look like much happened. I'm quickly going to add an HDR map to this uh, sky dome. That way that we can actually um, see the metalness. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to go to the hypershade, go to lights, click on the AI sky dome. And you can see here in the property editor, it has selected my sky dome and I'll go to color, hit the checkbox here, file. I've just quickly gone ahead and I've added an HDR uh, that way that we can see the metalness value a little bit better. So if I just go into the sky dome, I can my attributes here. Um, and this exposure value, just mess around with some values here. All right, so now that I have an HDR in here, I can see a little bit better about what's going on. I'm going to create light. All right, so now I have an HDR and a light in here, just so we can see a little bit better about what's going on. I will select the object again. I'll go to its material node in the attribute editor. And now you can kind of see what the metal metalness is doing. Okay, so now going on to the specular. So the weight of the specular is the amount of shininess. The color is the color of the shininess. So you can see usually things have a white highlight unless it's a very specific material um, but you can just mess with that just to get the desired look that you're looking for 
All right, the roughness value is how blurry that ref that specular highlight is. So as I start increasing this number, you can see that the specularity gets more diffused. And you can use a, a set value or you can map a value to this as well. You can map a, a black and white map. So black is going to be completely shiny. White's going to be completely matte. So this is black, zero. This is one, white. And the specular color is kind of like a multiplier. It, it's like kind of like weight, but uh, the actual color of the highlight. So if I just take it from white, it's going to be full. But if I start taking it down a little bit, it's going to make... So what it's doing is it's actually making the highlight this gray color. So it just looks like it's less intense. So it's just one way to, to map different things into it. So say I... Uh, so I just uncolor, I just checkerbox this and I'll just do a simple noise. And then let's make the scale like a lot, a lot bigger. And you can see... What's happening here is that, so I, I'm moving this roughness value around, but you can still see that noise in the color here that is driving that. So if I break this connection and I put this at full, let's map the roughness value this time. So you can see it has a little bit of a different effect. So I can't move this value, this roughness value, and see it's yellow. That means it's being driven by something else, which is that map that we made. So you see, you can click over here, then it goes to that. Or you could put a map in here as well, a texture map that you made. So I'm just going to break that connection. Make it shiny again. And the IOR is the index of refraction. And that is uh, how light is bent when it hits that object. So you can see if you type different numbers here, it's going to give you a, di a different result. So the anisotropy is a brushed metal. Um, so if you have like a metal that has a lot of micro scratches in it, like a you know refrigerator or something like that, um, it will stretch the specularity in a single direction. So. Um, you can mess with that and then you can turn the rotation depending on what direction that specular highlight is going to be rotating in. That's something you can, you can mess with. All right. So let's make this shiny again and move on a little bit. So transmission, when light rays hit it, they go through the object, bounce around inside of it and then exit again. Basically it's glass. So let's turn this up. But first this IOR, that we had up here affects the transmission of how it scatters through here. So I think water is 1.33. So this is generally how light bends through a water droplet that would be this size. So the as you increase this number, it's going to stretch the or bend the environment more intensely. So any the denser this object is, the more uh, distorted uh, the light is that's going to be going through it. So it's just going to bend the background a little bit more. So the, so the weight of it here, you can also drive this by a texture map. Just like this. So this is off and this is on. So I'm going to break that connection and turn this up. All right. So now Let's see, we're going to make this a purple color. So basically it's just coloring the light that's going through it. Transmission is going to be more dependent on the thickness of uh, different areas of the object. So if there was like a small little nub here, uh, the, the depth, or it would be changing the intensity of this color. So the dispersion, aberration, is whenever light goes into refractive object, it scatters the light a little bit, and then it will take white light, which is all the colors, kind of give these little color halo effects where it's scattering the light a little bit, like here. And 
you can just mess with this to try to get uh, a desired effect because whenever light does go through glass or a diamond or something it does shatter the light a little bit so that it breaks out into different different spectrums if you use this value up here it's going to make the entire refraction uh, rough and it's going to make the reflection rough but if you want the reflection to be tight you can leave the roughness very sharp and then you can increase the interior refraction roughness all right there is also subsurface which uh we will go over this a little bit later um because this is like a little I mean, this is more tricky um thing to to view with a sphere um we're gonna have to use a head model and have a certain light rig for this uh but this is basically just light getting uh, trapped inside and scattering around but not going completely through it like uh refraction and then coat is like a, a little extra reflectance so uh, just just adding an, another level of reflective surface on this so i'm just going to break that connection turn that off and then emission is basically turning it into a light source. That's all it is. So it's actually emitting light. You can see it's actually shining onto this bottom surface. So if I went up to the Arnold Utilities Light Manager and I turned off the lights, this is the only light in the scene is this shader you can see that it, now it's actually emitting light onto that surface and you can map different uh, textures to it uh, so that the black areas are emitting no light and the white areas are emitting some light or you can do a mix so you can just use uh, different settings but basically emission is just turning is it's the shader light that is actually going to infect the, uh, affect the environment. So that's a brief overview. Um, there's a couple more here. Uh, let me just turn this off. And off screen, I'm just turning the lights back on. Just the, the top, top light with no um, area dome on. So this film is similar to the uh, coat thing but this is more like a, like some oil or something on it you can just mess with the setting I mean you can just get different effects with it if turning down this IOR is just changing the uh, the facing that the film is on so it looks a little bit weird but uh yeah just just you can just mess with these settings try to get different effects and the geometry is uh, bump mapping, just very quickly. So it's just going to increase or decrease the um, roughness value of the surface. And this noise you can um, move around, just so you can kind of, it's just like bumping in the surface. All right, that's it for the uh, brief overview on the Arnold Surface Shader, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.